Okay, so welcome everyone to our Partners in Progress Connect webinar. I'm David Sherwood from EW Nutrition in Australia. Today's webinar is the sixth in a series of layer focused webinars. And our speaker for today is Dr. Suet Chotterman from Chiang Mai University. Dr. Suet, could you please introduce yourself? Okay, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon and good evenings. Uh, great to be here. Thank you, Dr. Suet. Also, we have with us today as a panelist, Suksan Chanprasert, who is Regional Technical Manager for Poultry EW Nutrition. Suksan, could you please introduce yourself? Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning, depending on your location. So I'm Suksan, the handler for a technical manager for Southeast Asia Pacific. And we are very welcome to, to you all in the, our webinar this week. Thank you. Thanks, Suksan. So what we'll do is after Dr. Seward's presentation, we'll have a Q&A session. And um, the way to, to ask questions is to use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Just click on the button and you'll be able to type in your questions there. And we will try to answer them all either verbally or by replying back in the chat box. But if we are not able to answer your question today, if we don't have time, then please just email us and we will pick up the correspondence from there. Also, we'll run a uh, short poll questionnaire at the end, which will only take about one minute to complete. So please um, fill that out if you can, it will help give us some feedback for future webinars. Okay, so Dr. Suet Chotanen is Assistant Professor at Chiang Mai University. He is a diplomat with the Thai Board of Veterinary Medicine and holds a PhD in veterinary science from Chiang Mai University and has a master's in science in health science from Chiang Mai University and holds a DVM from Chiang Mai University in Thailand. His research interests are poultry medicine, herd health and production management in poultry farms and veterinary epidemiology. He is the author of several publications on topics including salmonella, antimicrobial resistance and food safety. Dr. Seward, please start your presentation. Yes, and first of all, thank you, David. And first of, first of all, uh, I would like to say thank you for EW Nutrition for inviting me to be here. Um, this is the sixth session already. Uh, the participants in this call is many from many parts of the world, not only in the Southeast Asia, Pacific, Earth, Pacific regions. Uh, just only a few technical points to explain the setup of this webinar. I will deliver my presentation about 45 minutes during the presentation. You can ask Q&A from that open when you click on Q&A at the bottom of your screen. Uh, discretion and read, uh, read and answer in real time by the panelists if they require a longer or more complex answer, or it will have of interest to the entire audience, we will save them for the Q&A session at the end of the presentations. At the end of the presentation, as uh, David said before, you are kindly invited to leave your feedback on, the, on this webinar. The poll will remain open for five minutes after I close the session. Once again, thanks for being here. And now let's start. Uh, there are three main topics of outline of this presentation. The outline cover introduction regarding poultry production and trends, strategies to control respiratory problems, and conclusion and take-home message. So the world population has increased year by year. In 2050, the world population will increase up to nearly 10 billion, resulting in increase of 60% of food demand compared with the present day. In the past five decades, the world population, the world poultry production has increased continuously to meet high food demand. Moreover, the production trend in next 30 years, it's expected that poultry production will reach up to 200 million tons. Because of high food demand, the structure of poultry production, both in meat and egg, has greatly changed. In the past, the birds were kept in backyard raising, small scale farm, but at the present day, backyard farming and small scale farm slightly disappear and replaced with a co industrial sector, as you is the picture. Advanced technology, for example, breeding six uh, legislation, feed and feeding technology, 
turn the ventilation housing system as well as the use of antimicrobial agents as a close promoter are used to promote higher productivity. However, now the consumer have a higher education and income. The consumer's expectation of the change. They concern more about the food safety as well as animal welfare. As we know today, protein production is fought to stop or limit using of uh, antimicrobial agents because antimicrobial resistance is concerned as a public health threat. Moreover, consumer as well as large food product uh, production companies, for example, McDonald's, Burger King, need chicken meat and egg products that produce from animal will be farm. Hence, case system chicken farming is banned in many parts of the world, including EU. And for in Asia, uh, the farming system also changing again. Uh, so we have to have something to tackle with this uh, change. Antimicrobial or antibiotic resistance is considered as a world public health threat. The overuse of original use, the overuse, uh, the overuse or original use of antimicrobial in human animal productions is focused or is as blamed as a major cause of antimicrobial resistance. Therefore, many countries have launched the national plan to mitigate the problems. If you don't have any plan to tackle with AMR problems, it will be expected that around 10 million people will die annually from infectious diseases caused by AMR bacteria. Around half of them located in Asia. That is the reason why animal production, including poultry production, has great pressure of stop using or limiting of the using of antimicrobial agents. So we can not use antimicrobial agents to counter infectious disease, as we can do it again. Uh, for the genetic selection and uh, this is susceptibility, animal breeding technology, especially in the present day, is very advanced. You can see in the 1930, egg production was only 130 eggs per hen to 60 weeks of age. But in 2010, and even though 2020, the egg production increased up to um, 260 eggs per hen to 60 weeks. Unfortunately, there are many publications and evidence elucidated that higher productivity breeding selection in animal result to higher disease susceptibilities. As now, the communication and transportation around the world is very, very convenient and very fast. We can move from country to country within one day, maybe less than one day. And it also affects to this spreading for very easy, same, simple uh, examples. COVID-19 is spread throughout the globe just only two to three months. It is the same result as animal disease. For example, avian influenza outbreak. It is considered as a transboundary uh, trans disease. It transmits or spread from place to place, from place to place very fast. And when the disease occurs, it will result to great economic loss. Therefore, I can say that this is prevention is better than cure. Conceptually, there are two main parts contributing to disease prevention and control. The first concept relies on strict farm biosecurity and sanitation intervention. And the second concept is promoting healthy chicken and strong immune system. For farm biosecurity and sanitation management, the previous presenter also elucidated us already very clearly. So in this presentation, I will know, I will not go into the detail. I will focus on how to promote healthy chicken and strong immune systems. Actually, there are many management to promote healthy chickens, but in this presentation, I will demonstrate you six key measures in which associated with a respiratory control strategy. The strategy covers start with healthy and good protein management, effective vaccination program and vaccine administration, especially respiratory disease as MG or Microplasma Cholesepticum, Newcastle disease, and infectious bronchitis, control of port vaccination reactions, and control of the air quality up within the house, and control of the feed and drinking water qualities. 
So I will go. Ex I will explain deeper in each management. I will talk briefly on immune system. It has two kind or two system of immunity. The first one is innate immunity, and the second one is adaptive or acquired immunity. Innate immunity refers to non-specific defense mechanism that come into play immediately or uh, within hours of uh, an antigen appearance in the body. These mechanisms include physical barriers such as skin, chemical in the blood, epithelial cell in gastrointestinal tract, and immune system cells, such as phagocytes, dendritic cells, natural cells that attack foreign body, uh, foreign cells, uh, foreign cell virus or bacteria that come into the body. Innate immune, innate immune presence in animal advert. For adaptive immunity, it will work after innate immunity. This immunity uses specific antigen to stimulate an immune response by promoting B cell to be active and then produce antibody and activating the lymphocyte. Adaptive immunity response often work by enhancing the protective mechanism of innate immunity. It means that if the innate immunity is strong, adaptive immune will be strong. For layer chicken growth and development, at the early up, at the early stage of um, the age, is the main period of immune and gastrointestinal system development. For immune system development, thymus and bursa gland, that are the major immune organs that produce T cell and B cell, start to mature in this period. Therefore, the chick must be growing and developing properly. Gastrointestinal systems play very important role in immunity system homeostasis because of the 70% of immune cells located in GI tracts. For example, gas can uh, associate thin foil tissue as pet, dendritic cells, plasma cells, and so on. If gastrointestinal tract is properly developed, not only will live cell and other cells that associate to digestibility will be properly developed, but also immune cells in the immune cell will be properly developed. Moreover, recent publications reveal that there are connections between gut and distal organs such as lung and brain. For example, this research shows that uh, the connection called gut health, uh, gut lung exists is the major pathway in animal model and humans. It also shows that this virus in gut microbiota can implicate in several lung diseases. The publication also explained the mechanism of the connections. Short chain fatty acid that produced by common cell bacteria in gut, uh, gut microbiota in gut play a very key role in gut health as they serve as energy source for gut cells. Moreover, such as fatty acid play a role in immune cell stimulation and anti-inflammatory properties. More interestingly, such as fatty acid produced in gut can transfer to other distal organs via blood flow and lymphatic vessel. This is will stimulate immune system in the dose organ also. Moreover, dead bacteria which was destroyed by immune cells such as phagocyte cells in gut can transfer to lung via blood circulation and lymphatic vessels. Even though chicken has no lymph node, but chicken has risk of lymph vessel and lymph organ, lymphatic organ. So I could say that there is crosstalk between organs, gut and lung. If the gut develops and mature properly, it will affect directly to respiratory system. Therefore, Management during brooding period is very important. Healthy chicks without this is transmission from parent stock, for example, mycoplasma is very important. The house must be disinfected effectively. High quality of starter feed, clean drinking water, temperature control, light management must be properly implemented, and chick must access to the feed and water as soon as possible. Early access to feed and water is very crucial for GI tract development and maturation. If the chick can access to feed and water within 24 hours after hatching, 
intestine villi will be greatly developed as you can see really long villi. In the other hand, if the chicken cannot access to the feed bit and water within 24 hours after hatching, you will see the intestinal villi is really, really flat. Uh, there are some recommendations on feed additive that can be supplemented to chicks during brooding period, including probiotics, amino acids, vitamin C and E that can boost immunity and combination of enzyme to improve feed digestibility and essential oil to control the pathogens colonizations. Yeah. Uh, we will go to the next measure, effective vaccination program and vaccination administrations. Important respiratory diseases occur worldwide include the concern disease, infectious bronchitis, infectious laryngitis, and mycoplasma cholecysticums. We thank for vaccine scientists that develop vaccine and it's very effective to control the disease. But in the past, Mycoplasma synovi E. E. coli or onychobacterium is the uh, allergy important because we can use antimicrobial to control it. However, in the case of limiting of the use of antimicrobial or stop using antimicrobial or in the area of high prevalent, this vaccine may be the better choice. I will talk more in three main topic, uh, the main disease control. MG, Mycoplasma, Galicepticum, or MG, Newcastle disease, and IV. For MG infection, it caused a lot of economic loss by dropping of egg production. Since MG is lifelong infection, we have to use antimicrobial agents to control the disease along the racing, racing period. Moreover, MG infection can lead to increase high chance of other respiratory disease and post-vaccination reactions. Therefore, we have to control MG in layer. In order to prevent and control the disease, there are two main ways. The first way is to use antimicrobials such as macrolide, thiamulin, or aminoglycosides. However, there are many disadvantages of the using of antimicrobial, such as the cost of drug use quite very high development of antimicrobial resistance and antimicrobial just prevent the sign of infections, but it cannot prevent MG shedding and infections. The second way to control mycoplasma galicepticum is the use of vaccine. It has two kinds of vaccine, Q vaccine and live vaccine. For Q vaccine, it stimulates the immune system to produce systemic antibody not mucosal antibody. The main limitation of Q vaccine is that humoral antibody has no correlation with protection. For live vaccine, it is vaccinated by spray or eye drop. The vaccine will stimulate mucosal immunity. It won't stimulate humoral immunity or just a little. Therefore, we cannot detect humoral antibody or just a little level of antibody after vaccine administrations. In this presentation, I will talk about how to control mycoplasma galicepticum by using live vaccine. For live vaccine, there are two, three kinds of live vaccine, attenuate strain, including ape strain and 6 slat 85 temperature sensitive vaccine strain TS, uh, sorry, TS11 and vector vaccine or recommended vaccines, Valpox, for example. The concept of the most live vaccine except vector vaccine is that before giving vaccine, the chicken must be free for MG infection first. And then after we give the vaccine to the chickens, by spraying or eye drop, the live vaccine bacteria will go to colonize in the respiratory tract. And after that, when the chicken face with the few MG, MG, few MG will pass through respiratory system, but it cannot colonize. Therefore, 
the bird still free from few mg. In the other hand, if chicken get infection with few mg first, when we vaccinate mg vaccine to the chicks, vaccine strain cannot colonize in respiratory tract. Therefore, vaccine is not successful. Let's see to the disease spreading. There are two sources of disease transmission, vertical transmission and horizontal transmission. Infected parents' dog can shed the bacteria to their offspring vary, vary from 5 to 45%. It means that not all the chicken in the fox infected with MG from parent stock. And then uh, the infected chicken will uh, transmit the disease or share the bacteria to another chicken in the flux or we call horizontal transmissions. Therefore, to, to prevent the infection in layer chicken, we must control vertical transmission first by making MG free of parent stock. So we will get the MG, uh, we will get MG free chicks. But in the case of infected parent stock, we have to limit uh, the rate of vertical transmissions. This diagram show the disease control and monitoring measures. The O6 will be checked for MG status by using ELISA for the percent of the maternal antibody of MG. If the checks are negative to MG, it means that parent's flock is MG free status. Therefore, the chick flock also free from MG also. And then uh, for four to five weeks of age, we can vaccinate them with live vaccine. We can check again at uh, 17 weeks of age of the chicken before moving it into the layer house to make sure that the flock still free from MG. However, if the chick show positive uh, result to the ELISA, it means that parent stock is in MG infection status. Therefore, we have to limit horizontal transmission by using effective antimicrobial agents, such as tyrosine for the first uh, three to five days. And after that, we will check uh, the blood again at four weeks of age. And then if the birth still show a limit number of infections, we can vaccinate it. But if the birth show increasing number of uh, positive to uh, MG, it means that uh, it, uh, the horizontal transmission is occur very, very high. So we cannot give the MG vaccine to the flux. We can check also during the, uh, we can check MG during uh, egg rotation period to make sure that the birth free or not free status of MG. This slide shows negative result for MG in chicks flock. It means that the flock is free from MG. This slide shows some of the chicks have maternal antibody for MG. Reflect that the parent stock can shed this is to, the, to their offsprings. The main limitation of, however, uh, the main limitation for this method is that the parent stock must not be vaccinated with Q vaccine. In this case, I recommend you to check zero profile at the four weeks or one week before we vaccinate live vaccine. Or we can using PCR at the uh, day or six to test about the presence of MG. We can check zero profile of the pullet uh, layer before peak production. If zero profile show like this slide, we can ensure that the layer is still healthy respiratory system. But if the flock shows zero profile at this light, it means that the flock is putting at risk because during peak production period, layer are very stressed and more susceptible for other respiratory problems. For Newcastle, briefly, it is the one of the most contagious diseases in chicken, resulting in high 
it will be loss from mortality, loss of egg production and egg qualities. This is control and prevention include farm biosecurity and sanitation, effective, vaccin effective vaccination program. The use of Q vaccine with live vaccine is still commonly practiced in many parts of the world. However, at the recent day, vaccine technology is uh, developed very advanced. Uh, vaccine, vector vaccine such as Malik and Newcastle disease is uh, very popular in broiler production, but in poultry production is still limited, but uh, it is increasingly interested in laying production. From my point of view, the major cause of vaccination failure is not from vaccination program or uh, vaccine, but it is from improper vaccination administration and technique. To ensure that the bird get protection from vaccine, we have to audit vaccination administration. There are two kinds of vaccination audit. The first one is uh, hatchery and uh, on the farm or hatchery auditing of the vaccine administration. And the second one is the retrospective auditing, or we call serologic monitoring. The previous one, the previous uh, speaker also talked about the vaccination failure already. And in this slide, I just show some examples. This is an example of uh, auditing of the vaccination administration at the hatchery. Newcastle and infectious bronchitis vaccine are usually vaccinated at uh, hatchery by spraying technique. The particle size should around 100 to 150 micron for inhalations. But for smaller particle size may result to severe post-vaccination reaction. But in the other hand, two large particle size Chick will not get vaccine because the vaccine does not pass through uh, respiratory system via inhalations. It will drop around chicken body and crown. And you can use this technique at the farm level also. Humoral immunity level is directly correlated with the Newcastle disease protections. If chicken has lower antibody level and then get infection with the virus, it will show very high mortality and loss of productivity, a loss of productivity. Technically, uh, the layer during a production period, the antibody titer test by hemagglutination inhibition test should be 9 log 2 or less than 11. Log two. In this, uh, should be in this uh, level. But if it less than um, nine log two, it means that the chicken uh, risk for infections. This is an example of Newcastle disease local five. The flock is a nineteen week of age and the. Uh, uh, mean title of this flock is nine point is around nine, and percent CV is only sixteen. Percent CV will reflect to the extent of variability uh, of the herd immunity. If percent CV is high, it reflect that the herd immunity is low. The percent CV should be around fifteen to thirty, and you can see like this. Yeah, it's very really good result. The geometric mean title is nine and percent CV is uh, 16 is a good example. And this is the some examples in 18 week of age of the layer. The geometric mean is nearly nine and percent CV is very, uh, really low, just only 15. It means that this flock has really high protective immunity and have a good herd immunity. But in the left hand, uh, but in the right hand side, you can see that uh, the geometric mean title of this block is very low, just only six, seven, and nearly seven. And percent CV, even though percent CV is good, it means that out of the bird at the flocks, 
show low antibody diet. Uh, but when we use ELISA for checking zero profile, protective antibody level uh, of the layer during peak production period should be around uh, 10,000 to 14,000. And this is, uh, I show you a good example of that. Um, it has, a, it show very high, it show quite high uh, geometric mean, nearly one ten thousand, And CV is very really low, just only 20. It means that this flock has protective level and has high herd immunity. For IB, or uh, infectious bronchitis, it is also the one of the important infectious diseases in chickens. It causes high mortality in chicks. Moreover, the disease will affect the reproductive system, resulting in too low egg production and egg and low egg quality. Like this, you can see when the chick uh, get infection when they were young, uh, the virus will destroy the rest uh, reproductive system like this. And it resulting to low quality of the eggs. Also, this slide demonstrates examples of the low profile of a uh, layer. Chicken during, um, before moving into the chicken house, uh, layer house. Yeah, this is the sick. 16 week of a chicken. It show very high mean antibody. It's around uh, around 13,000 and percent CV is quite low, just only 20. Uh, why? The antibody data is quite very high like this because this farm used uh, Q vaccine to vaccinate them many, many times. You can see like this. But this, this is the bad example. Yes, this is the 18 week of age. The pullet nearly give us the production already, uh, nearly give us the productions, but you can see the antib uh, antibody level. Antibody level just only 2000. And some of them has no antibody. And percent CV is quite very, very high. It means that uh, the herd immunity is not good. And the antibody of the chicks, uh, of the chicken, is not reached up to the protective level. You can see like this. Uh, during the peak, uh, during the production period, um, antibody to Infectious bronchitis virus should be from 6,000 to 14,000, depend on vaccination program. If you use more about the Q vaccine or you use uh, vaccination to the bird frequently, uh, the antibody data will be up like this. Uh, Control of the post-vaccination reaction is one of the very important measure to control the respiratory problems. The measure are keeping layer flock as uh, MG free status. Control of the vaccination technique. For example, the particle size of the spray vaccine should be 100 to 150 uh, micron. And the overuse, uh, overdose of vaccine uh, for spraying to the uh, layer is really common practice. It is okay. It is can uh, can be accepted because some vaccine can lose from the air, can lose from uh, outside, uh, go out to the uh, from the house, but don't use very high, very high overdose. For example, three times, four times is not okay. Control of air ventilation in layer house is use uh, control of the air ventilations and antibiotic to use to uh, control out, uh, to give them after vaccine to prevent the post vaccination reaction. But it uh, for this time antibiotic use for this 
uh, purpose may be considerable. Or we can use alternative medicine, just like the essential oil. For example, you can lift that oil to control the post-vaccination reactions. Uh, ventilation control in the house is also important. Air speed in the house should be 255 to 455 meters per second, depend on the type of the house or depend on the temperature in the house. Ammonia should less than 20 ppm. Human can smell uh, ammonia as uh, at 20 ppm. It means that if we can smell ammonia, the ammonia level can harm to the chicken hair. Carbon dioxide should less than 3000 ppm. And for the humidity, the ideal level is should be 50 to 60 relative humidity. But in the tropical area, just like uh, Southeast Asian countries, uh, sometimes the humidity in the house may be high up to 80 to 90% relative humidity when we turn on the pump in evaporative cooling system. It is okay. It is okay. If uh, it has a high relative humidity, we have to manage with the uh, air speed. But it's okay for short term, 80% relative humidity, 90% relative humidity. In short term, it's okay when we run the uh, evaporative cooling system, but not all time. Dust should be kept as minimal level as we can because it will irritate the respiratory systems. Good quality of water is also important for gut health. Ground and underground water are commonly source of water used in the livestock farm. Therefore, con contamination of bacteria can be found. Coliform bacteria contamination in the water used in the farm indicate that physical contaminations. Uh, the important point is that bacterial contamination in drinking water can contribute to gut, bio uh, gut microbiota degradation. Therefore, drinking water should be treated, should be treated well before use. Water pipeline, uh, sorry, you can see like this. Water pipeline should also be cleaned regularly, especially when vitamin and mineral are frequently given to the bird by drinking waters because of the formation of the biofilm. Biofilm is a slab layer of bacteria contained in the matrix and it releases the bacteria into the drinking waters. So it can disturb the gut microbiota. And, and if the dysbiosis of the gut, biota, uh, gut microbiota, you can see just like the enteritis and undigest feces like this, and it will lead to enteritis and necrotic enteritis. Uh, control of the vex, uh, control of the mycotoxin in feed is very important. Mycotoxin is recognized as a toxic substance and immuno uh, suppressions. Mycotoxin can affect several key functions of the system of the body, including GI tract and respiratory tracts. For GI tract, it will result in decreased nutrients absorption and stimulate inflammation. Some mycotoxins such as T2 toxin, formalicin are toxic to intestinal epithelial cells and uh, Thai junction. So it means that uh, the GI tract will be, disturbed, disturbed, uh, will be destroyed. And remember that it has association between gut and lung. So we have uh, the measure to control the feed in the uh, control mycotoxin in the feed. So this is some example to show you that uh, the report of mycotoxin contamination in feed. You can see a very high mycotoxin contamination. In uh, in in this uh, lie is the limitations that can affect to the chickens. For aflatoxin. 
the mycotoxin should not um, uh, higher than 20 ppb or cryotoxin should lower than 40 ppb fumonisin should less than uh, 5 ppm t2 toxin should less than um, 200 ppb for silenone is not a uh, silenone is, uh, actually chicken also tolerance to silenone but not more than uh, 250 ppb even though you can uh, even though you see the just like this you can see the very low contamination of each uh, of each mycotoxin but remember that the mycotoxin can interact with each other and the result is quite very very high we call interactions so that we have to monitor of the mycotoxin contamination in feed and feed stuff so feed me is one of the risk place for mycotoxin production and contaminations feed meal production line should be cleaned regularly like this you can see like this it is the uh, feed contained in the production line you can see the mold and this mold can produce con uh, mycotoxin that can contaminate in the production line don't check just only the feed stuff but have to check along the production line in the feed meal also as well as feed silo, because feed silo stand outside of the house and uh, it faced with the cold weather, hot weather, and it will uh, produce and, and the feed can uh, strictly attach to the wall of the silo and uh, it can produce the mycotoxin that contaminate to the feed. You can use a rubber hammer to knock it, especially in the bottom of the silo because of the uh, condensed, uh, the, the, the feed is really dense in, in this area. So for the conclusions, to control respiratory problem in layer, it is not a single approach. Uh, it has no magic bullet for controlling the problems. But it is a very, very comprehensive or holistic approach. The measure include uh, good, uh, starting with good chicken health, uh, healthy chicken, especially free from MG, and have a good management during bloating period, effective uh, vaccina uh, vaccination program, and have an auditing program of the vaccine control of the post-vaccination reactions, control of the air, uh, air flow in the house, control of the feed and water quality by, especially in the uh, mycotoxin contamination in feed, and not only treat water, but also the pathline or pathline system in your farm, especially in the house. So thank you very much. For your, atten for your attention, and this is the session of Q&A. Thank you, Dr. Suet, uh, for a very practical and, uh, and broad look at this topic. Uh, we hear a lot about uh, gut health, but it's uh, respiratory health is uh, extremely important, so it's good to see some light shone on this topic as well. So, uh, yeah, please um, send in your questions via the Q&A box, and uh, please bear with us as we take a look at the list and we'll start to answer your questions. Yeah. Uh, the first one is that how, uh, how to differentiate chronic respiratory, disease and chronic respiratory disease with chronic respiratory disease complex with E. coli. Uh, actually, uh, in the lesion, maybe we cannot uh, differentiate by, by lesion but we can isolate them by uh, sample collection and for the bacterial contaminations. So, any possible for APEC related pre, uh, I think APEC, APEC or um, avian pathogenic E. coli related predisposing cause of majority concern respiratory disease infection potency. Yes. 
I think it is a very, uh, it has really close relation. Uh, I also use, uh, when we control uh, mycoplasma very well, but I still found the problem with the respiratory, prop, uh, uh, respiratory disease. And I think it, it caused by uh, APEC or avian pathogenic E. coli. So uh, we have to avoid uh, E. coli vaccine is quite, uh, for now, in the past, uh, E. coli vaccine is less uh, important because we can use antibiotic to control it. But now we, can, we cannot use antibiotic or we, can, uh, we have no choice. Sometimes we have a limitation of the use of antibiotics. So E. coli vaccine may be your choice. And the next question that uh, is, up, is from C News is up, the question is up to now, how much, how much for the percentage of egg production drop can be seen due to ND? Mm, the answer is sometimes difficult uh, to measure uh, the percentage of egg production drop because it depends on how severe of the challenge of Newcastle in the farm. And the other factor is on how well of the immunity, the frog immunities against Newcastle disease, maybe from 5% to up to 50 or more than 50% of egg production drop can be seen from Newcastle. It depends on how much the uh, virulence of ND and the flock immunities from the vaccination. Dr. Susan, would you like to answer this question? So, okay, you, you, you can have an, another suggestion, please do so. Which question I can I, I cannot uh, I cannot read the read the question. Which question, Doctor Suksan? Uh, so, uh, may I ask you about your experience? Because we have the the question from Ron is that about the, your experience about how do the essential oils mm -hmm. to reduce the post vaccination reaction in layer. Mm -hmm. and what is the mechanism and which essential oil that you have the experience with? Okay, for the use of essential oil to control the post-vaccination reactions, uh, I ever use uh, essential oil just like the eucalyptus oil to control it. Uh, because of post-vaccination reactions, if you see to the lesion uh, in the bronchi, or in the trachea, you can see the excessive mucus secretions and it will uh, affect to the, I mean, to the respiratory tract. Eucalyptus oil can uh, make or uh, to, can clear the mucus and make the chicken breathe easily. And some uh, essential oil can uh, has the bactericidal property and it can destroy the, and it can kill the bacteria located in the, uh, pre present in the trachea and uh, prevent of the secondary infections. But the first thing I like, uh, I, I, I like with the eucalyptus oil is that it can clear the bronchi. Is it okay, Dr. Suksan? Thank you so much for Dr. Sweet. And uh, so, so what is the best policy to try and eradicate and control Mycoplasma Galiceptacum from multi S layer project as often seen in all over the world? Uh, the first thing is that uh, we have to separate uh, put it layer farm and um, layer farm that in the pre, uh, in the productions uh, and then that when we uh, 
said uh, when we vaccinate the uh, pullet with live uh, with live mg and then uh, when we with uh, with f strain and then we replace for example you have 10 house and when you de deplete the first house you take uh, the new one that vaccinate with live mg vaccine to the to the to the to the farm and then uh, when the second house deplete you will bring the you will bring the new flock of uh, pullet that vaccinate with live vaccine mg already to the flocks and then for the third flock depleted you will bring the new flocks that uh, vaccinate with the vaccine uh, live vaccine already to the flock to the layer flocks and then replace 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 and yeah and after that we, uh, you will get the free um, mg status on the farm it will take time you cannot uh, you cannot uh, do it within one year two year three year but depend on your farm maybe take time for four year five years okay So one question uh, about the vaccine, uh, for the, your opinion, doctor, mm -hmm. about the vaccine between IB vaccine at 120 and MA5 vaccine, which one is more immunogenic? Uh, actually, H120 uh, and MA5 uh, for, the patho for, for, for the pathogenicity. Uh, H120 uh, is lower pathogenicity compared with MA5. So, however, if we use MA5 in one day or chick, it's too strong for the chicken and it will result to um, post vaccination reaction. From my point of view, for, uh, from my point of view, the first time we can use low pathogenic first. We can uh, we will use H120 first to memorize the uh, to memorize the chicks to produce memory cell, and after that, when we vaccinate with uh, uh, MA5 the chicks will respond to the vaccine very quickly. It is good for both of them, but depend on time you vaccinate. If the first time you vaccinate with a high pathogenicity, it will lead to poor vaccination reaction. Okay, is, is it okay, Suksan, Dr. Suksan? Thank you so much. And uh, another question ask about vaccine also about any vaccine. In the okay. case the fill, the face with high any challenge, which vaccine between any clone or any la soda, which one has a better immune or in terms of immunity, in terms of protection? between any clone, maybe clone 30s and any las odas in uh, high uh, any challenge area. Okay, from uh, in the high prevalent area, uh, we have to check about all, if you have uh, equipment, we could check about um, the genotype or phenotype of the, uh, of the virus first, but if it has no uh, equipment, we can uh, we can estimate that, that um, maybe many kind of virus, many many type of virus outbreak there. Uh, in this case, um, I use I will use combination of them. For uh, Lasota clone, the advantage of Lasota clone is that it produce very quite high uh, antibody level, but and is uh, give us the low 
post vaccination reactions but for lasota lasota is the pathogenic city is quite um higher than uh, than lasota clone but the it can produce more of the antibody type it means that I will use uh, MA5 maybe the first one at uh, the first time, two time, or second time like this. And after that, I use uh, Lasota to boost um, the vaccine, uh, to boost the antibody level. Thank you. And another question asked about the treatment of water pipeline. I understand that this question is asked how to clean the water pipeline with what uh, the product categories. Normally, in my opinion, to clean the water pipeline, to clean for biofilm, or uh, even uh, calcium in the pipeline, you always use peroxide, group hydrogen peroxide to clean the water pipeline for biofilm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, we can use uh, hydrogen peroxide. We can use hydrogen peroxide, but uh, do it around monthly, once per month, and please do it in the in the at night, not do it at um, during at noon uh, at the daytime. Yeah. Or you can use um, water pumps to push the water uh, water in your pipeline. It will clean effectively. So the, ad, the other question is about MG, eradication from the farm. Mm -hmm. in your yes, I, 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 I your asked this question already. Yeah. Oh, I asked okay. this question already, yeah. Uh, I, I answered this question already. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Which MG vaccine is effective vector? Live or Q vaccine? Which MG vaccine if Effective vector. Uh, vector vaccine is live vaccine. Yeah, uh, they cut the gene and put into um, the host just like the marex or pox. And then when we uh, when when we and the virus has both of antigen, uh, pox and MG vaccine. So when we vaccinate them uh, by being web the bird will get both of them, pox vaccine and MG vaccine. Why vector and the vaccine is more effective in layer? Uh, percent of the use of vector and the vaccine is not too much. So I have no more data about that, but in broiler it's really effective. And the, from my point of view, uh, and the vaccine, vector and the vaccine has to uh, introduce to the farm when the disease or when the prevent of the disease is not so high, or you have to clean uh, your house really effectively because it take uh, when you give the vector vaccine to the bird, it will take some time to produce antibody titers. Not at that time you produce. It means that during uh, uh, during the bird uh, developing the antibody level, we have to have the measure to control the disease. So, I okay. answered this question already. Sorry. Okay, we have probably time for one more question to be answered. I think. Mm. Yep. Uh, so yes. we have the. Uh, interesting question about how to 
uh, in the case of the peak production, if we found that NIB and ND died a drop, can we do the vaccination at that time to lead the peak, produ peak production? Any effect to the egg performance or not? Um. Oh, we went, wait for after peak and then do the vaccine. From my point of view, uh, when the at the peak production period, if the antibody titer is low, uh, get lower, and if you need to vaccinate it, you have to wait for just um, the interval period, just more than two or three weeks. Because when we vaccinate with live vaccine, uh, it will infect the respiratory tract with live vaccine, live virus vaccine, and it causes uh, inflammations and it will take time around two or three weeks to kill it and after that we can we can spray it from my point of view if you have a high high titer during the during peak production period you can wait you can wait a little bit and you have to have any measure to control the to control and prevent the disease, that as did infections about the tray, tray uh, about the egg tray, uh, about the biosecurity, uh, I, I mean. We have to do both. Don't rely on vaccine. But if you would like to take vaccine to give the vaccine to the bird again, you have to wait um, more about two weeks or uh, three weeks after the last vaccinations to prevent the vaccination reaction. Because if you vaccinate uh, one week after the last time, the bronchi or the trachea is still inflamed. If you give the vaccination again, the inflammation is quite increased, increased and increased because of the, your vaccinations. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Suet. And thank you, Suksan. Uh, that was great and unfortunately we have run out of time. But uh, yes, I'd like to thank you all for attending and for your questions. And as I said before, if we haven't been able to answer today, please email us on webinar at ewnutrition.com. Uh, also, there'll be a recording of this webinar tomorrow up on our website and I'll launch the poll soon. So please um, take uh, one minute to fill that out if you can, please. And also join us next week for our seventh layer webinar which will be on necrotic enteritis in layers by Dr. Ajay Boya from EW Nutrition. See you next week. See you. Thank you. Thank you.